Do you know end plate joints are the most common ones in steel buildings? In this tutorial, you will learn design of connections and joints through practical examples. This is part 18 of lecture series on steel design. For other parts, have a look at description down below. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. In this tutorial, I will talk about end plate simple joints, design rules and examples. You will learn initial sizing of simple end plate joints, shear resistance of simple end plate joints and one work example. Simple and moment resist resisting joints. The difference between these joints is really very simple. Simple joints are the ones which only take shear from beam to the joints which only transfer shear. They do not take any moment at all. They rotate at the ends. And as a result, there's always going to be a gap between end of the beam and column. In here, you can see this partial depth end plate joint, full depth end plate joints. These two joints can be classified as simple joints. And lateral loading is resisted by bracing. On the other hand, we have moment resisting joints. Extended end plate joints are termed as moment resisting joints, which means that they transfer moment from the members to the joint. But here I will talk about only simple joints. For initial sizing, I will be using this NCCI, initial sizing of simple end plate connections. And you can if Google, if you Google this, you will be able to find it easily. And both partial and full depth end plate joints are covered in this. Design rules only apply to bolted connection using non preloaded bolts, which are category A bearing type bolted connections. These are typical joints. Here on your left side, you can see partial end plate joint. And on the right side, this is full depth end plate joint. Now, first, we have to choose end plate. If applied, a shear force is less than or equal to 0.75, then we can either have partial or full depth end plate joint. It depends on us. If it is greater than 0.75 VCRD, where VCRD is the shear capacity, VED is applied, then full depth end plate joint has to be adopted. And again, we have this formula as well. I will not go into details, but I will solve the problem. I will apply these formula choice of bolt normally we will use 8.8 .8 bolt which is the most common one and m20 60 mm long number of bolts can be found out by ved over 75 and then we have to round it the nearest to where ved is in kilonewtons end plate dimensions if height of the supported beam is less than 500 millimeter then end plate thickness can be 8 or 10 millimeter and end plate width has to be 150 millimeter. The gauge P3 can be 90. And again, for the height of end plate can be found out by this formula, but 0.6 height of the beam is the most common one. Well size, if you are using S275 steel, throat can be where throat is, is this distance. Leg length is S. S can be 6 millimeter for 9 mm web thickness. For other web thicknesses, you have different leg and throat dimensions. The position of bolts, this comes from table 3.3 in Euro code. I've already talked about this in lecture where you have this minimum end edge distances and spacing P1 and P2. Then there's another document, which is here resistance of a simple end plate joint. And again, for, for this one, I've used NCCI guide, SN14A, E, and EU. These are rules for simple beam to column or beam to beam joints. And these are also rules for end plate joints which support a beam and column or a beam and bearing type connections are used. This is the design model of end plate. I already talked about it. These are the checks that need to be carried out. Most of the time, the most critical ones are these two. This is bolt and shear. It means that when plate thickness is high, in, in that case, bolt is going to shear and bolt is going to fail. End plate bearing means it is the bearing failure of the plate. It is the most desirable one as well because we don't want our bolt to fail. The other one can be beam, web, and shear, but this is not critical, but these two checks need to be carried out. 
And in addition to that, we need to check the tying capacity of the connection as well, which means that we have to check the tension capacity of, of the board. So tension capacity and shear capacity of the board and end plate bearing, these are three checks which are absolutely critical for these joints. Again, these are rules for the, these joints. I've already covered these rules. I will not go into de details. I will simply go to the ductility welding requirements. So we have to fulfill these welding requirements as well. And ductility requirements, the thickness of the plate, I will use these requirements when I will solve the example. Let us now go and solve the example. This is the handout part 17 and 18. It gives you all the formula that I'm going to use here, uh, except rules of thumb. Rules of thumb do not belong to Euro code 3. Bolt in tension, bolt in shear, bearing of the end plate. These are three failure modes that need to be checked and the position of the bolts. Let us uh, solve the example now. The example that I'm going to solve today comes from a steel building design worked example SCIP 387 guide. The example that I will solve is example 10, which is the beam to column flexible end plate connection. So this is the G2. This is the beam column joint that we need to model. Beams are connected to this column and this is the end plate joint. So beam to column connection at level one between grid lines G and two, which I showed you earlier. The initial sizing of the components of the connection column is 254 by 254 S275 steel. Beam is 457-191-82 UKB. For beam, FY is given, FU is given as well. Height of the beam comes from section table 460. Thickness of web is 9.9. .9. Thickness of flange is 16. For plate thickness, FU is going to be 410. VCRD, first I have to find out VCRD, which is AV, FY under root 3. AV, I'm assuming that height of the beam times thickness of web. Shear is mainly taken by the web. So from here, we can work out the shear capacity of the beam. From a shear design, the loading calculation is given. From shear design VED, that is the applied shear load, that is 230 kilonewton. Applied shear load comes from the analysis of the beam. So in initial sizing rules, it says that if VED is less than 0.7 VCRD, then either partial depth or full depth and plate joint can be used. Here, VED 230 is less than 0.75 VCRD. So we're proposing a partial depth and plate. Height of the beam HB is less than 500, uh, which means that 8 to 10 millimeter end plate thickness can be proposed. This comes from the next slide where HB height of the beam is less than 500, then 8 or 10 millimeter end plate, plate thickness can be assumed. So 8 or 10 millimeter can be assumed. The end plate depth has to be 0.6 HP. This comes from here. So depth of partial depth end plate has to be 0.6 times HP1. And from here, I get 280. Assuming M20 bolts, which are the standard one, number of bolts is, again, from, from here. The number of bolts is VED over uh, 75. VED is 230 divided by 75. It comes from 3.1. So we have to increase it by two, it comes out to be five, but five cannot be used. So we use six M20 bolts. Based on initial sizing, we come up with this configuration where you can see that the depth of the plate is 280 and six M20 grade 8.8 .8 bolts. This P1 and E1, P1 is 85, E1 is assumed to be 55, E2 is assumed to be 50, and P2 is 100. Let us see if these values are fine or not. We will have to check it against the minimum values. So M20 grade 8.8, .8, 60 mm long. Area, tensile area is 0.78 pi over 4 d square. D0 is 2 millimeter dia more than M20. DW is diameter of washer, which is the standard one, 37. Yield strength of the board is 640. Ultimate strength of grade 8.8 .8 bolt is 800. Now, minimum uh, dimensions, again, these minimum dimensions, they come from Eurocode table 3.3 and section 3.5, I think. We assumed E1 as 55. Minimum is 1.2 D0. D0 is 22. So minimum is less than the one that we have used. So it means it is okay. E2 is 50. Again, E2 is 1.2 D0. Again, this is less than 50. 
used it means that this is fine as well vertical pitch is 2.2 d2 the p1 assumed is 85 2.2 times 22 is 48 this is less than 85 as well so this is okay and this has to be less than 14 kp so 14 times thickness of the plate is 10 it is 85 so that's okay as well horizontal spacing assumed is 100 and this minimum is 2.4 times d naught 2.4 times d naught is 52 which is less than 100 so this is okay as well the next thing is well designed for full strength side welds uh, throat should be greater than 0.39 GW. And again, this comes from the second NCCI guide. S275 steel, well designed A should be greater than 0.39 TW and TB1. From here, A should be greater than 3.86. And we have assumed throat of 4 millimeter and leg is 6 millimeter. It means that this is okay as well. Partial safety factor gamma M0 is 1. Gamma M2 is 1.25 for bolts in, in shear. These are from these documents. This is the second document that I showed you earlier. The next thing I want to check is the ductility requirement. That is again from the second document. The ductility requirement is that if the supporting element is beam or web, it should satisfy this requirement. TP should be less than or equal to D over 2.0. Eight under root FUB over FYP. So let us see if this is satisfied or not. D diameter is 20. FUB is the ultimate strength of bolt. FYP is the yield strength of the plate. And this comes out to be 12. As TP, thickness of the plate is 10. That is less than 12. It means that ductility is fine. And then we have to check joints in shear. So we have to check all these failure modes, but the critical one are these ones, which means that bolts in shear and end plate and bearing and beam web in shear as well. So we have formula for each one of them, but here these are the critical ones. So let's check first of all bolt and shear. For bolt and shear, we have formula F F V R D is equal to alpha V F U B A over gamma M2, and this comes from section 3.6.1 table. 3.4 in euro code 3 part 18 and if you like these formula are given here as well so for different bolts in the handout part 17 and 18 handout you can find the link down below in description if our grade is 8.8 .8, so alpha v is going to be 0.6 fub is the ultimate of strength of bolt and as is the tensile area of the bolt so let us see what we get over here alpha v is 0.6 if we put all these values tensile area is 0.78 pi over 4 d square and gamma m2 is 1.25 from here we get 75 kilo newton as we have six bolts so we will multiply it we get 451 next thing is bolt and bearing for we have this k1 for inner bolts and for for outer bolts so let us see what we can get here here fbrd Alpha B is equal to this formula, where this alpha D is equal to E1 over 3D naught for end bolts and this formula for inner bolts. Let us find out first of all for end bolts. So end bolts is E1 over 3D naught. E1 is, is 55. D naught is 22. From here, the minimum is 0.83. And for inner bolts, this is, we're going to use this formula. So P1 is 85 over 3 times d naught minus one over four so from here minimum is one so for inner bolts it's one so we have we have two end bolts so shear is applied like this we have six bolts these two bolts are end bolts and uh, these four are in a direction of applied shear is this and from here we get value of alpha and k1 K1 is using this formula here. We have two formula for K1. K1 for edge bolts and inner bolts. Edge bolts means that it is it is against the direction of the loading. So when you say against the direction of the loading, we don't have any inner bolts. All bolts here are on the edges of the plate. There is no inner bolt over here. So that's why we will use simply this formula for K1. So let us see what we get from here for k1 we got value as 2.5 and if we put all these values here in this formula then we will get fbrd as 164 so we have two 
n volts and 2 inner volts. So multiplying, we get value 9 to 8 kilonewton. Then for group fasteners, so we have shear resistance as 75, which we worked out earlier. So 6 times 7.5 is 451, which we worked out a little earlier as well. So 928 and 451. Beam web and shear, let us check what is beam web and shear. So it is AV, FY over under root 3, gamma M0. According to this excess steel guide, which is the second document that I showed you, so we have to multiply it with 0.9. So if you put all these values, AV is height of the plate and thickness of the beam web. And from here, we get 396. The design shear resistance of the connection is 396, which is greater than 230 kilonewton. It means that it is fine. Then for tying resistance, tying resistance is necessary for ensuring the robustness in a, in a connection, which means that just in case of failure in a local member, the failure is not progressed to the entire structure and it does not result in progressive collapse. So for robustness, we ensure that tying resistance at least has to be greater than 75 kilonewtons. But here we will check the tying resistance of the bolt, which is bolts in tension, which is first formula. But there are other couple of formula as well, which are a little bit complicated. So I will not cover them, but I will simply cover this bolt in tension. So bolt in tension, we found out a little earlier, K2 FUB AS. Uh, it is this formula that we can use. It's this first one. So from here, from here, we get value for six bolts as, as 962, which is greater than our applied shear force. I think it was 230. So in that way, we can carry out calculations. So I've just carried out the calculations for the top one, but there are other three checks needs to be done, but they not be much critical if you're interested. I can put the link and then you can have a look at these. These are some formula over there. So resultantly, we had beam in here. We found out this 451, then from bearing, we found out 928. It means that this joint will fail by bolts. And again, beam web and shear as well. So the minimum one is beam web and shear. That is why we will say that the resistance of the joint is 396. But this 396 is greater than the applied shear, which was 230 kilonewton. So this means that joint is okay.